Hello, this is Nathan from RPS, and today I'm bringing you Titanfall, a game about the horrors of pollution causing it to spontaneously rain robots. A game in which robots who just want to dance are enslaved by cruel human masters and forced to do their fine, fine, it's just a game about giant robots. No dancing or love stories or pollution, because video games are boring. But anyway, these are burn cards. This is one of the first things you do in the game. You select them, they're one-time use, so once you use them up, they're done, but they confer bonuses like, for instance, increased weapon damage or movement speed. You unlock more as you play, and they even come with little Magic the Gathering style descriptions on the bottom that have humor and wit to them and stuff. It's a nice touch, and Titanfall is a game full of nice touches, which is great because it shows attention to detail in game design, and because I'm 12 years old and find the phrase nice touch to be pretty funny. Then it's into matches, where you can choose between pre-made character classes, or if you've leveled up a couple times, a loadout of your own. Basic character types emphasize well-roundedness, speed slash stealth, and close quarters combat. Personally, I found the shotgun to be just about useless when, came push, to come, when push came to shove, but maybe I'm just useless with shotguns. Anyway, I tended to stick with more well-rounded characters, simply because Titanfall is a game where a lot can happen, you need to be prepared. And also, I, hadn't, I never got around to unlocking the sniper rifle, which is something that I'm more comfortable with. Um, but as you can see, you know, movement's very fluid and fast. And then here we are defending a capture point, which is, th this mode's called hardpoint, so, you know, pretty pretty much par for the course with this type of thing. Go to a point, hold it for a little bit, and then it's yours, and then after that you should defend it. You get a fairly healthy amount of points for defending, too, so you have a pretty nice incentive to stick around, although I found that defending points could sometimes get pretty unexciting, just from a standpoint of, like, teams would rush a certain point, and if you weren't at that point, then... Yes, you were technically doing your job and scoring, but nothing was happening at all. Um, from a basic standpoint of movement and shooting and whatnot, the game feels fairly similar to Call of Duty, and you can see that here. I mean, it's it's it, it's just a similar type of shooting setup, which is not to say it's at all a similar game because there are so many other dynamics in it. But there you go. Um, one of them is the weapon types. There there are they're pretty basic overall, but there are a couple that are at least worth noting. Like, there's one that I sadly didn't get any footage of, but uh, it's called the Smart Pistol. And you can just point it in a direction, and it'll quickly lock on to either multiple enemies, or if it's a human enemy, just one, but multiple times. And you pull the trigger, and it just hits them instantly. It feels like it could be a very, or if not a very, then a somewhat cheap weapon. I'm worried about that. I didn't feel it killing the gameplay balance necessarily, but it could happen. Um, that remains to be seen. Now we're coming up to around the two minute point in the match, which is roughly when Titans start coming into play, though it's variable based on how well you've been playing t up to that point. They change everything because, you know, they're giant robots and you're a tiny two-legged blood balloon. So you summon them like this, and it's just, it's really satisfying in general, because they fall out of the sky, and then you hold down a button and immediately get into them. It's just this, it, it feels really empowering. So, Titan versus, Titan versus Titan fights are slower paced affairs, but they're still quick. You have to dodge a lot. Um, you can do that just by, on the Xbox controller, hitting the A button. Um, I didn't get to try it with mouse and keyboard, so I don't know how it works on that yet. But yeah, you gotta move a lot. You're armored, but like if I didn't, if I stayed in one spot, then uh, I got torn to shreds in seconds. So you've gotta be, you've gotta be aware, and you've gotta be very aware of your surroundings, because if you get surrounded by multiple titans, again, you're you're basically fucked. So there are also anti-titan weapons for in infantry, and those pack quite a punch as well. I tried two, but only one was really effective. The default missile launcher is honestly kind of terrible. It's slow, it pings off titans like a rocket-propelled kitten eyelash, and most damningly, it gives away your position with its lock-on. The rapid-fire anti-titan weapon is far, far better from both a damage output standpoint and in terms of covertness. It's kind of no contest. As for the titans themselves, 
Different Titans are equipped with different sorts of weapons. For instance, I'm using a long range sort of gun here. But you can also catch enemies' projectiles and fling them back at them. Which is a really fun, interesting mechanic. Just in that you can have these back and forths where you like catch a whole bunch of missiles, fling them, and then the your enemy will catch them and do the same thing, and you just go back and forth until with this like weird mechanized patty cake thing until someone blows the fuck up as mechs are wont to do. Now, you can also end up in situations where an enemy pilot can try to hack into your mech and basically ruin it for you, so you'll have to hop out, shoot them off, or something like that. Um, and the sum total of it all is that your mech is actually a fairly vulnerable thing. I mean, it's gigantic, it's in this battlefield full of constant activity, and so, like, right here, mine just blew up because it had taken too much. Um, you're not invincible when you're in a mech, not at all. You're actually quite a huge target. So, it's definitely, there's a lot of interplay. It can actually sometimes be more effective to just stay as an infantry unit and run around and take out mechs. You can get up high in buildings and hit them where they can't see you from. It's pretty cool. Um, as you saw there, I just had another really good mech cockpit entrance. Again, I, I can't stress enough how good that feels. Like, there are moments where it, like you're, you can like call it down and then leap and land in the same spot at the same time and the mech will catch you and it's like fuck yeah mech friend thanks like it's it's really neat and then yeah you can also eject out of mechs like that which launches you into the sky and if i was better i would have shot that mech with my rocket just lots of cool little things like that i mean it's just, the the whole mech setup is really well thought out now, as you saw just a couple seconds ago, and as you'll continue to see, there are a bunch of little NPC infantry units running around in addition to human players. And they're around, and they make battles a lot more chaotic, but my ex in my experience, they didn't make them that much more difficult, or even really that much more interesting. Um, I mean, there's sort of a double-edged sword type of thing going on there. On one hand, they didn't really provide much, but on the other, like... It was nice sometimes, if I was really sucking it up, to just go shoot one of them, because, you know, reliably kill them. You don't get as many points, obviously, but it is satisfying, and it does sort of hone in on something that Titanfall does well, which is even if you're not doing very well, the game's still fun to play. And that's not to say that it's like a casual thing where it makes all these concessions to players who aren't very good, but rather it just it keeps in mind that you might not be winning. And so it provides alternative goals, even when you're not the best player on the field, even when you're not the person headshotting everybody or dominating everyone in mech battles. And that's cool. It's cool because it really feels like it's a game that's focused on being satisfying on a lot of different levels. Even when you decide to play idiotically, like me right here. The most overt way in which it does that is with the epilogue. For the losing team, you've got to escape to a dropship, and so that gives you a, another objective when you've already lost in terms of points captured or kills or what have you. And that also emphasizes the movement system, because you've got to haul ass to get to the point, and so you're bouncing all over walls and climbing up everything and hitting roofs because you don't understand what a physical barrier is and you think you're some sort of sci-fi future ghost idiot like myself. Okay, anyway. Um, and yeah, you've just got to avoid a lot of stuff, and it's really exciting. It's exciting for both teams, and it's just a cool way that the game engages you beyond a typical win-loss setup, and then you run into a mech's legs and explode and die. But, you know, it's, it's pretty neat. I found myself encountering these especially heartbreaking situations where I'd be trying to escape to the dropship, and I'd be in a mech. And, like, my mech became, like, my my friend, and so when I was trying to escape, I'd abandon it and put it into AI mode, which is where it, like, fights for you and you can fight alongside it, and I just let it be a distraction, and then, as you're about to see here, I'd just hop out and, like, for one lingering moment, watch my mech fight on without me as I fled into some rabbit hole or toward the dropship or something. And it was interesting, because I felt like legit guilt from doing that. I mean, it was just, the, my mech is a giant tool. It, it doesn't actually matter, but it was just one of those cool little dynamics I found in the game. For myself, anyway. So, in addition to hardpoint and attrition, which was basically team deathmatch, uh, we also got to try a mode called Last Titan Standing. 
and I ended up enjoying that one more than I thought I would, because it's it's pure Titan play until you get knocked out of yours, in which case you, you have, no matter what, you have one life, and if you die, then you're out. Um, you can es If someone blows up your mech, you can still escape from it and keep fighting on the ground, but again, if you get killed, that's it. So the idea is to knock out everybody's Titans, or the other team's Titans entirely. And as you can see, in this particular instance, we're doing a pretty good job of it. Last Titan Standing definitely emphasizes a lot of team play, again, because Titans are so vulnerable when it's two-on-one. And so, yeah, we're working here sort of as, like, we have a couple going in, then I was sniping from the outside, we're going around and flanking and stuff like that, and it, it gets, it becomes very satisfying. And also, sometimes you find little infantry units running around, and, I mean, come on, this isn't even fair. It, it was very fun for me, though. I will say, though, that regardless of the mode, whether it was Last Titan Standing or something else, once a team really got going, I ended up finding it very hard to turn the tide to sort of keep things even. And I'm not sure if that was because I was playing with inexperienced players, and so people weren't really coordinating well, or if that's because of the way that the game matches work. That's going to remain to be seen, but it is a concern of mine. Overall, though, I came away very pleased with Titanfall. Uh, it's it's a really interesting shooter from the standpoint of the mechs, obvious things like that, but also traversal and movement. The premium, the premium it puts on those, reminded me in some ways of older shooters like Quake, just because you've got to be moving so much no matter what state you're in, and it's pretty fast-paced. So obviously it's not Quake fast, but at any rate. There's a lot of hidden depth, too. There's going to be a lot of things to unlock, obviously, but also techniques to master, things like that. I was impressed, and I hope to play more in the beta. Anyway, that's all for now.